Hello, this is a video consent for laparoscopic cholecystectomy presented by CHI Health. By now you will have already talked with your doctor about a medical problem involving your gallbladder. In this video, we will walk you through the consent process for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. We will discuss the planned surgery as well as its risks, benefits, alternatives, and expected outcomes. The gallbladder is a sac-like organ that sits beneath the liver. The gallbladder stores bile produced by the liver. The bile travels down the bile ducts from the liver into the gallbladder, where it is stored. When you eat a meal, especially a fatty meal, this triggers release of the bile which travels down the bile ducts into the first part of your small intestine. This bile helps break down and absorb fatty foods. Cholecystectomy means removal of the gallbladder. The most common reasons your doctor might recommend a cholecystectomy are biliary colic, cholecystitis, cholecystitis, or gallstone pancreatitis. Biliary colic, also known as symptomatic cholelithiasis, is caused by gallstones, which are hardened deposits of bile. Gallstones are common in the general population, and gallstones alone are not a reason for gallbladder removal if they do not cause symptoms. However, sometimes gallstones can get caught at the neck of the gallbladder, causing pain when the gallbladder contracts against them trying to release its bile, especially after a fatty meal. With biliary colic, the pain typically resolves within an hour or so. Occasionally, a stone or some other blockage may prevent the gallbladder from emptying over a long period of time, causing an increase in pressure and trapped fluid within the gallbladder. This can cause inflammation and infection of the gallbladder, which we call cholecystitis. Cholodocolithiasis is when there are one or more stones in the bile duct, which can cause backup of bile into the liver, and depending on the location of the stones, could cause pancreatitis, which is inflammation of the pancreas. Other reasons for gallbladder removal, though less common, are gallbladder polyps and cancer. Your surgery will be done in an operating room while you are completely asleep. The length of the procedure can vary, but is usually one to three hours. It is typically done through four small incisions with the help of a long camera. We call this laparoscopic surgery. Once we have entered your abdomen, the gallbladder is located. We identify the artery that feeds the gallbladder and the bile duct that leads to it taking great care to avoid the many other structures that live nearby. Clips are placed over the duct and then the duct is divided between clips. The same is done for the artery. The gallbladder is then carefully separated from the liver. The gallbladder is placed in a bag and removed through the largest incision. Your incisions are then closed and the procedure is complete. In some cases, if we worry that there may be gallstones in the bile ducts, we may do a cholangiogram. This is when we put a small tube into the bile duct. We inject dye through the tube and take an x-ray to see if there are any stones in the bile duct. If there are stones present, we may have to do other interventions to remove the stones before proceeding to the next step. Occasionally, a large incision may be necessary if the procedure cannot be completed safely through the smaller incisions. If we find this to be a more complicated case, such as if there was a lot of scar tissue, adhesions, inflammation, if there was bile spillage, or if there is concern for a possible bile leak or bleeding after surgery, we may leave a drain in place. In addition to your surgeon, anesthesia providers, surgical residents or surgical assistants, nurses, and surgical technicians will be present in the operating room. Since this is a teaching hospital, medical students and other learners may also be present. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy is one of the most common surgeries we do, but like all surgical procedures, there are potential risks. You must be aware of these potential risks in order to make an informed decision about whether or not to proceed with surgery. Not every possible risk can be addressed here, but we will discuss some of the most relevant ones. Significant bleeding is one risk which may require hospitalization, blood transfusion, or in some cases return to the operating room. Infection may occur in the abdomen, in the surgical incisions, or in other parts of the body. We may give you a dose of IV antibiotics right before surgery to help decrease this risk but even with an uncomplicated cholecystectomy, infection may still occur. It is not uncommon for the gallbladder to rupture in the process of removing it. This can cause spillage of bile and or gallstones, which increases the risk of infection after surgery. When this occurs, we retrieve as many stones as possible and wash out the abdomen to clean out any spilled bile. Another common risk is bile leak after surgery. This can occur when the clip falls off the bile duct or from an extra duct that some people have between the gallbladder and the liver small enough that it is not easily identified during surgery. 
In some cases, bile leaks will resolve on their own with time. But depending on the severity of the leak, a drain may need to be placed by interventional radiology or you could require another surgery. Another risk is a retained gallstone in the duct following surgery. This could necessitate further procedures after surgery and may extend your hospital stay. Other risks of laparoscopic cholecystectomy include hernia formation at the incision sites, injury to the intestines, common bile duct, liver, or other nearby structures, blood clot formation in your legs, which could travel to your lungs, or rarely, death. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy requires the use of general anesthesia, which is the process of putting you to sleep for surgery. Your anesthesia provider will meet with you before surgery to discuss the risks involved with general anesthesia. The main benefits of this operation include in biliary colic, improving your symptoms, in cholecystitis, preventing progression to a worse infection or chronic pain, in cholecystitis, relieving the blockage of bile which backs up into the liver and can cause severe sepsis if left untreated, in gallstone pancreatitis, if the gallbladder is not removed, it can continue to release stones which can pass by the pancreas causing inflammation and increase the risk of recurrent pancreatitis. Alternatives to surgery in those with biliary colic include lifestyle changes such as reducing the intake of fatty foods, which can cause contraction of the gallbladder. An alternative for patients with acute cholecystitis is antibiotics and lifestyle changes, but this has a chance of recurrence, non-resolution, and other complications related to gallstone disease. In patients for whom surgery is very high risk, we will sometimes advise placement of a cholecystostomy tube, which is a tube placed by interventional radiology to drain the gallbladder. This is not generally recommended for patients who are a fit for surgery, as it is ideally meant as a short-term solution until someone is healthy enough for surgery. After the operation is complete, you will awaken from anesthesia and be moved to the recovery room where staff members will monitor you closely for a few hours. It is common for patients to stay in the hospital for one or more nights following surgery. You can expect to have some pain from the incisions, which will be treated with pain medication prescribed by your doctor. Nausea medications may also be provided if needed. An ileus is a motility problem in your intestines which can cause delayed return of bowel function following surgery. This can lead to nausea and vomiting and could lengthen your hospital stay. Before you leave the hospital, detailed instructions will be provided, including information on lifting restrictions, returning to work, wound care, and planned clinic follow-up with your surgeon. We hope you have found this video to be informative. Please let your doctor know if you have any questions or concerns before proceeding with surgery.